Hello and welcome to the Final Frontiersman, a YouTube show about all things Trek, but with a very specific emphasis on the Star Trek role-playing game by Modifius. I am your host this time, Jeremy, and I'm accompanied by Bill. And this particular episode is going to be a follow-up episode to my cosplay video where we were discussing tips and tricks on cosplay. I gave a few of mine. I may have a few more, but we have Bill who has a few opinions and tips of his own. How are we doing today, Bill? Yes, I'm doing fine. I, I want to say also, um, as you can see, that we are in costume, as usual, as we like yes. to do. Um, but as a follow-up to Jeremy's first video on cosplay, the um, you might notice um, these very nice uh, rank pips that I have on my collar. These were not purchased anywhere. These were by the fantastic Jeremy right there as a um, as a sign of all his skill. So thank you for that, Jeremy. They, these well, you're are very awesome. welcome. I'm glad they're still holding up. Uh, I sent some more to another uh, set of friends of mine, and they were like, yeah, they fell completely apart. I'm like, well, nice. These so. ones are doing good. <laughs> these ones, yeah, I, I can't complain good. at all. all right. So let's talk a little bit about um, some, some questions that I had lined up for you is mm. what is your favorite uniform? So when you were thinking about buying your first Star Trek uniform, uh, did you go with your favorites? Um, so that's kind of a two part question. So, yeah, when I when I bought my first one, the first one after I was an adult and buying costumes for myself, I went with my first one because at the time my favorite was the Deep Space Nine first contact uniform. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably if you've seen videos, you've probably seen me wear it or the vest or part of it um, numerous times. Uh, I loved it. I love that whole setting. And yeah, I went straight for that. And I had a disastrous time getting the correct uniform. And I'm still not happy with it, which is really the point of this video. And that's the point of what I'm going to be talking about to try to help uh, viewers who are in my circumstances avoid the pitfalls that I went into. Just like Jeremy, you gave a lot of tips of how you stumbled along the way and you improved. Um, I want to share it from my perspective, which is a bit different from yours. But yeah, that was my first one. It's definitely a journey and not a destination when it comes to cosplay because anything and everything can be improved. Uh, yeah. No matter how yeah. perfect you think it is and outside of wearing a screen used uniform you're always going to be improving and the Demesis ds9 uniform mm. that one among like when i'm in cosplay groups and people talking about it that is the the most difficult one outside of the monster maroon there's th those two seem to be the most difficult ones yeah but that, that one because of the quilting uh, that, that quilted shoulder pattern. Mm. And I just got lucky that I was like, this one looks fine. Yeah. <laughs> and that one you're going to have a lot of trial and error with. So anybody who's looking to buy that one, I'm actually going to warn you to be really careful and read some reviews from the person you're getting it made from. Mm. Can't get it done right. Do it yourself. Learn how to sew, I guess. But yeah. that's a whole other skill right there. Definitely. Okay? Yeah. So that was the first one that you mm. you encountered. Now, um, is that still your favorite one, or have you have you moved on from that one? No, no. My favorite one, and we were talking earlier. My favorite uniform now, and I have to say, it's also my favorite uh, costume I own now. Is uh, you're looking at it. It's the Picard season two slash season yes. three. Technically, this is the season two version that was made on mm -hmm. um, there's slight differences, um, very minor differences to the season three, including the way the shop makes it. And I'm going to also speak about that later. But cool. I love this uniform. And as we said, it it's it doesn't have the Nemesis Deep Space Nine elements to it. But otherwise, it seems to take the things I love the most from many other uniforms throughout Star Trek and combines it into one package. And I love it. I love the pips. I love the turtleneck. I love the design. I love the flap. I love the badge. This is now my favorite, favorite on-screen uniform in the Star Trek yes. universe. 
I agree. I've I've got a lot of love for that uniform too. The Nemesis DS9 one. I love the it had that military look to it, but it fit the theme of DS9. They were at war with the Dominion. Yep. Uh, but that one right there still pulls it back to the more colorful TV Star Trek thing that they were trying to do with the original series with the three the tricolor uniforms and all that. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Okay. I love. It. Another question I have is when you put that first uniform on. And you saw yourself in that uniform. What did that feel like to you? Do you remember that? Did it did it have an effect on you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, first I'll say it not when I first put it on because the first one I got was an absolute disaster. So <laughs> a couple months afterwards when I returned it and I got a replacement in that was better, but still not exactly mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. When I put it on. Yeah. And I just looked in the mirror like step by step with first the red undershirt then the vest and then the outer jacket and i i just well, i was beaming i was smiling <laughs> like this i I've, I've been waiting my entire adult life to get this because i've never grown up since i was a kid watching star trek back then but i've been waiting for that uniform and when i finally got it yeah it it, it made a huge difference and that's why when we do our our role-playing game star trek adventures role-playing game um also on the channel the next frontier series uh i'm always in the uniform because i want yes. to wear these as much as possible right absolutely they're fun to wear they, they really really are fun to wear um so so now we're going to get into the meat of the video, and I'm going to listen to you talk for a bit about what are your tips? Because you're in a really interesting position, too, um, where you live. There's not a whole lot of cosplaying going on. So what do you do? Um, well, do you feel maybe different or any different advice? Well, let, first, let me correct. There's a ton of cosplay going on here, just not Star oh. Trek. Just not Star <laughs> just Trek. Not that, Star is Trek. that is There's fair. That is fair. There's not. A, this is a Japan. Yeah, cosplay. this is... This yeah. is the place where cosplay um, straddles that line between uh, creepy and cute. Uh, but Star Trek <laughs> cosplay is rare. Star Trek fans are not as common. So I can't just go to like normal uh, where maybe normal for other cosplayers in the West or in Western countries um, where they might mm -hmm. go to get tips or to pick up things or go shopping. Uh, anything I order is coming from overseas. There's nothing local I can buy here, really. Anything I can buy local is being sold from someone who obtained it from overseas. So I see. it's difficult for me, especially now with the exchange rate, making everything um, nightmarishly expensive on top of already inflated shipping costs because of the pandemic and everything that's happening um, in Europe with Brexit, with the war. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's becoming hard. So I'm not a rich man. Um, I, I, I know that um, most of the viewers think that I'm raking in the millions with our nearly 300 subscribers here. But uh, I can assure <laughs> you that the, the channel... Um, uh, cost me money it doesn't make us money but no i don't yeah. i don't have a lot of money uh to just spend frivolously any more than i already do so what i have to do when i'm looking for costumes when and i love them is i i'm thinking from i want to get the nicest looking one i can get it's not going to be green accurate not 100 percent, but i want to get as nice looking as possible and affordable where i'm not going to feel bad that i made the purchase because it's going to be expensive regardless but it's not going to be uh disastrously expensive so that's i want to share my tips today are basically, uh, I want to recommend three shops for any um, budding cosplayer like myself. Uh, Jeremy is very experienced. You saw the first video, maybe. Uh, you saw his whole journey. I, I don't have that experience. I don't have those people that I could talk to, that I can meet, that I see other people in costumes that can inspire me and could give me advice. I just have to work on a budget. 
So anyone in my situation who is in that same feeling that you want to do it, but you don't have access to all that and you don't want to spend too much, I hope that this video can help you. So if I may, and I believe Jeremy, I believe you're going to be able to back me up on um, my three recommendations here. Uh, so may I start with number one, sir? By all means. Uh, I'll start small and work our way um, to the biggest recommendation. The, honestly, it's the best thing I could give anyone um, for advice for where to get your cosplay. But uh, the number one, number one, like a countdown here, uh, number one is the site called Fansets. And I believe you're well familiar with that, Jeremy. Very much so, yes. Uh, when I discovered Fansets, changed everything and if i'm not mistaken i think i mentioned them in my first video um, i believe you did yes those. yes good source for badges and yeah. the like they make lots of pins they make lots of collectibles and that but they also make huh, badges they make the star trek communicator badges now keep in mind these are not for cosplay use Fansets does not have the license to produce props or cosplay material however mm -hmm devious people like ourselves use the very easy to attach magnets that make them look very very <laughs> much like a cosplay accessory but uh, so yeah a lot of people talk about that when they go on the fanset site they're like oh look at that that'll be great for cosplay but it says on there not for cosplay use they're like then what is it it's a legal thing it's a licensing thing they don't have the license okay. for it they make collectibles it's not their fault if evil people like us use it for cosplay. It's a collectible. Uh, now, they have pins and they have, like, magnetic badges. And, uh, of course, when you're having a uniform, you don't really want to punch holes in it. So I usually go for the magnets when they're available. Uh, and Fansets has magnets for all the main ones. You see me wearing the Picard Seasons um, 1, 2, and 3 up until the end of 3 badge here. Mm -hmm. I have my um, movie, my uh, TOS movie uh, edition here, the Monster Maroon badge, which uh, Monster Maroon, like Jeremy said, that's a difficult costume to get right. Uh, Jeremy, I believe you're wearing one as well. I am, yes. This is the uh, Magnetic Science badge from uh, Strange New Worlds. And you know, it was like from the TV. Have you ever seen them remove the badge? It comes off. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the episodes where it just comes off. Two little magnets on the back mm. right there and it just just fits right back not going to do any damage to any material that you've got which is something i really appreciate because my my nemesis uniform uh you can see where i have punched mm. holes through it i've since upgraded that badge to a magnetic one but sometimes the only option is a is yeah. pins so yeah. for example i've got this particular one here on the back of it you see that's yeah it's going to have pins but they use a rubber backing, though, so it's going to be comfortable for your wearing. So Which is good. If you yeah. have to do the pin, just be be aware it can damage the fabric. Yeah, so you'll get... When you get from fan sets, it, it looks as close as possible to, to what you get on screen because they are fully licensed product. Uh, it's not for cosplay. It's, a, it's for um, collectability, but you're getting extremely accurate things and i believe they run all of these badges run between um, most of them are like 22 us dollars i think the most expensive one is now like around 40 us dollars but i think i, I would say probably 95 percent of the badges that you could um procure for cosplaying purposes will be 20 22 23 dollars a piece um, US dollars, whatever that is in your local currency, which is like $500 million in Japanese yen right now with the exchange rate. So it's 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 affordable, but it's horrible for me. Everything overseas is horrible for me. But fan sets, I, I highly recommend them. Highly, highly. Um, because it's affordable, it's accurate, they don't damage the fabric, and like even if you get the pins, they're not that bad bad over time yeah if you keep it on it's going to drag and it's going to wear and loosen but if you're careful with how you use the pins um it's not going to really cause any major damage that you'll you wouldn't see anything for a while let's just put it that way 
would you say? Yes. Yeah, I I, I agree with that every step of the way. Fansets has been a very good friend of mine ever since I started getting into this. And you're the one that recommended them to me. Yes. Um, (laughs) One thing that I will point out, though, because in my first video, I talk about trying to get as screen accurate as as I can. And and I struggle with kind of picking at some people like, "Eh, that's the wrong badge or Mm -hmm. "Eh, the badges are on the wrong side thing. This is where I'm going to pick on fansets just a little bit, because Mm -hmm. when we talk about screen accuracy, when I go and I watch these older episodes of Star Trek, um, the uh, the badges didn't shine. They weren't. Yeah. That, they didn't have that metallic sheen. That's the correct word. Two of them. They were just almost like a matte, muted color. And the ones you're going to get are going to be a shiny look to them. So they are shiny. Yeah. There's that, and though I pick on them for that just a little bit because well, it's not screen accurate, but my the other side to that is they stand out so when i'm in my cosplay or when i'm at a convention setting the badge is usually the first thing that people really comment on it's like oh my god where did you get that badge yeah. you know like oh my god that's it's it's really the shine helps it makes the uniform pop i think it looks great even though it's not exactly that matte muted color mm-hmm. definitely yeah that's, oh, again, screen accuracy, not 100%, but design-wise, it's really as close as you're going to get, and it's official. So Correct. that is my number one suggestion. It's the cheapest suggestion I have, and it's, um, I, I think, even if you're not going to do a full costume, just wearing a badge automatically puts you in Star Trek cosplay. So you're automatically there, no matter what you're wearing. So that's my number it one. Does. Shall I move on to number two? Please. Let's go to number two. Okay, number two is going to be on the flip side. This is probably the most expensive uh, recommendation I'm going to have. Uh, and I don't have a whole lot to say. Um, but I do want to point it out because while it is expensive, it is still affordable. And we're going with it's very close to screen accurate that that you get but it's not a hundred percent screen accurate there is another online shop called hero within they make jackets and they make lovely jackets they make nice jackets some of them in fake leather some of them in real leather of course the real leather ones are much more expensive uh but the the um faux leather are also um very good design and i'll have a picture to put up as well but i don't know if you'll be able to see very well here but this is my strange new worlds away team jacket that when i saw that on um in strange new world season one when i saw them go down to the planet and they had this beautiful jacket on i thought i need that i want that so bad and It came out, it came out on, um, what is it, Hero Within, and I saw it there, Uh, I saw it there, but it it is expensive, this runs about $100, Uh, so that's, it's a bit of a jump if, again, what I'm saying is I'm trying to make things affordable, so saying $100 for one jacket just for a costume, um, that's not exactly affordable, but for the quality you're getting, Again, you can see a logo Hero Within. They have a nice like Enterprise property, of Enterprise inner lining here. Uh, got great jackets. The feel is wonderful. It's nice, thick, heavy. The patch is lovely. Uh, again, it's not 100% screen accurate, but it's close enough for that price point. There are other companies out there that are making like as perfect a replica as possible, but about three times the price over two to three (laughs) times the price and some of them i don't really know a lot about and i haven't heard reviews for so i can't speak about them this company uh they have that and they've also just made and released the um leather jacket from picard season three they have other star trek jackets as well but they Mm -hmm. also in fact i believe like the day of the finale they launched it uh they have those leather jackets um in all three colors on um, gold red blue 
Uh, so you could pick those up, go to their site, look at it. Again, it's going to be pricey. And if you opt for leather, it's going to be even more expensive. But comparatively, it's not that expensive for the quality that you are getting. So it is a I jump in price. But jacket. What's that? I, I yeah, I it's I've so absolutely nice. fell in love with that jacket when I first saw you in that. I was like, wow, I can't. I, I never thought about that one because I, I know the episode you're referring to. And um, wow. That, and it excites me that uh, when you were just sitting there telling me about they've got the, the season three jacket. So you know, the one that Riker was wearing. Yeah. Uh, if I'm getting uh, it's got the um, the pips that are on like a stripe. Yeah, they're like on the, yeah, on the bar, side. on the collar. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm taking notes here as well. So yeah, they have as it. experienced as I may be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have it. Uh, okay. But but um, wait, there's more. So let me just go to my last recommendation because this is the big one. This is honestly the one I wanted to make this video about. Uh, you see the you see the uniform I'm wearing. You see the uniform that Jeremy is wearing. Uh, if yes. you watched our other videos and if you watched the Next Frontier actual play of our role playing game, and you see us in costumes, uh, you might be wondering like, where did you get these costumes? Well, mm -hmm. not all of them, but the best ones I have are all from the same source. The ones that are the nicest material, including this one, the ones that have the nicest fit, the ones that have the best design. You could see the delta that's imprinted here. It's not just a smooth color. Uh, the material is good. And the price is insanely reasonable for the quality you are getting. They all come from the same source. And it's the source that... If you go on Twitter, if you go on social media and you see other people in the very nice costumes, many of them, if they're not making it themselves, many of them are getting it from this very same source too. The place is called, the company, the group who make it called, uh, tell me if I'm pronouncing this right or not, but Coser Mart or Coser Mart. Uh, C O S E R M A R T Coser Mart Coser Mart right. maybe costume so Coser Mart. Uh, mm -hmm. It's sold on eBay. There's a few now. If you go eBay and you type Coser Mart, you might not find it at all because there's a few sellers here and there that that are connected and they sell it. But there's one uh, main account where they launch all their stuff, and that's where you're finding what I would say is the official Coser Mart uniforms and i'm going to link that down in the description here um because there's no way i can pronounce what the username is uh but now now before you get to that it's it's a shop in china uh so it's a factory in china that they make these very beautiful accurate pretty darn accurate uh not perfect of course but extremely cheap extremely affordable but high quality costumes for most of the series and most of the films that you've seen including one-offs here and there and some originals too that i've never even seen in movies that they play around with but a lot of people complain or at least worry that well it's it's just a knockoff on ebay how can we trust them these aren't official products and mm -hmm. i get that i i i get that but that's why i'm here to recommend as well as a lot of voices behind me on social media, the fans that have bought, I'm recommending Costume Art and I'm recommending the account in there. And like I said, I can't pronounce a name and I honestly can't pronounce a name. And it looks Chinese because they're a Chinese shop, right? But uh, our a fellow um, member of our, our cast for Next Frontier, uh, he lived in China and his wife is Chinese. So I asked her, like, how do you say that name? She's like, that's not Chinese. That's not a word we have. So they're probably just combining. Um, it, it's probably like a representative of something, but it's not mm -hmm. like a word itself. So she said she honestly can't tell me like how they want it to be pronounced because it's not like a real word uh so there's possibilities but i wouldn't be able to say it anyhow but i'm linking to them <laughs> honestly god I, i've bought so many things from them including this costume that you see right here jeremy i think yours is from there as well 
Yes, I do believe. Now, I I want to say they have links through eBay because I have all of my costumes have come from eBay. Yeah. Um, but I think I'd usually end up following on the same one because as I'm scrolling through the list of eBay, like, yeah, that costume looks okay. That one looks fine. Like, oh, that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I when you see look. the nice one, it ends up yeah. being a costume art. And like I said, it, there it are is. a few stores. There are a few stores. I'm going to link to what I say is the main one. Now, the main one, they they also, uh, they have a social media too. That it's kind of private. Um, I, I guess they don't put it out there just for whatever reason, but they connect with the customers. They show prototypes of upcoming products and they start asking who wants this one. And if they get enough people who want it, they'll put it into production. And that's once it goes in production, it appears first on the site that I, or the store, the eBay store, I'm going to link below. So go there. Uh, me too my strange new worlds costume which again these are not official these are fan made products basically mm -hmm. uh but i uh, i believe i'll be putting the picture up later if you'll see paramount actually gave away these coster mark costumes as part of their promotional package when strange new worlds was released on blu-ray so that's fantastic <laughs> paramount themselves got these costumes from the shop I'm linking to, to give to the press, to hype up the show. That's how good the quality is. That's how, yes. that's how close, again, it's not hundred percent screen accurate, but it doesn't have to no. be. Uh, it's good. It's affordable. And it's not just, it's not just costumes. They make props too. You could buy phasers. They make badges. I got my discovery badge from them. Uh, my discovery on uh, collar badge from them. Uh, they they dabble in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. And one thing I will also point out to be aware is make sure you're reading the description of what you're getting yep. really, really clearly as well. Um, for example, uh, this uniform here does is supposed to have like a black undershirt. Mm -hmm. So I'm just using a black undershirt. You can't really see it because I've had malfunctions with that and if i'm not mistaken bill your uniform it's just the shirt it's just the shirt that yeah. that black right there yeah. is probably a, you people use dickies they use yeah. turtlenecks that sort of thing yeah this one so, here is a dickie i i bought that um mm -hmm. the the for my strange new worlds i got an undershirt from uniqlo uh but gotcha. also costume art does sell a lot of the undershirts too and more recently they've been making so they also have more screen accurate uh full undershirts from picard season three that you could buy now including the ribbed uh collar which um oh, which wow. this one doesn't have because like you can't see all my poor quality camera anyhow so <laughs> don't really care about okay. that but uh i want to add to that that's another main point i want to make uh when you shop from these ebay stores these ones that are being made in china which the majority of them are some of them will say ship from uk from us from australia but they're all actually going through china they're all made in the same place um 99 of the time do not buy based on your size buy based on your measurements <laughs> If, this is true because is every true. costume is going to be slightly different the make is going to be slightly different so for example this is a large this is a large picard season two uh this fits perfectly but i need a medium in discovery season four to get a close enough fit because the That's large is massive so yeah. anytime you go find your measurement what i did after some trial and error i got this picard one this fits like a glove i love it everything about it is perfect so i save their measurements from that from that store from that selling for this item and every other costume i get i compare to the measurements for this to see which one has the measurements closest to this so i know how comfortable it's going to feel so that's the big tip I have to give you is go, don't go buy what size you are. If you buy large and everything else, that's not going to apply here. You're going to have to get your measurements.
Right. Be very aware of your measurements. And I can speak to that as well. Um, this is a 3X because I'm a big old boy. <laughs> um, and I, I generally, traditionally, I wear 2X in the U.S. But um, I was like, when I first ordered, I was like, you know, just going to get a 3X. And one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to fit or it's going to enable me. And it was actually a little tight on me so just be aware of, of yeah. that check your measurements make sure you know what you're getting occasionally you'll run across some shops that will do custom jobs though yeah so if a three and four is just not really going to work for you don't be afraid even if you like well no maybe a 1x or a large is probably where you're going to be but i want something custom fit they mm -hmm. will do that traditionally you're going to pay like a little bit extra so just be aware of that yeah but it will be for you. This that uniform is not going to fit anybody else if you go that route. So. Yeah, definitely. But I, I'm just going to reiterate. I I have a lot of costumes here. I have the jackets in in the closet. Every one that I would say is good quality, that's best, that I love wearing, has come from Costume Art. Uh, yes. I do have some nice ones from other shops that I do like. But I don't wear them nearly as much because they don't quite sit the same. They don't quite feel the same. Uh, but all the ones that I love, they're all from this store. So go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I'm glad we kind of got delayed in making this video because they just, at the time of recording, the day before I saw it, it was just posted, they have the new dress uniform from picard yes. season three that is now yes. up for sale uh it just released it just debuted uh so it's sort of like the leather one we talked about but it's the cloth version and right now on their on their private social media they are showing prototypes of the leather version they're making to see if they have enough people who want to buy it I hate to interrupt myself, but I have some breaking news I want to share. Just a few hours before I started editing this video that we filmed one night before, Coaster Mart has just put on sale, as you can see on screen there, the leather versions for the Picard Season 3 jacket. Now, it's a fake leather, it's the poly leather, but it's um, their version that I was just talking about that they were seeing who was interested apparently enough people were interested and there it is it's already on ebay it's already up for sale so um again follow the link down below if you're interested again i recommend coaster mart as you heard me just talk about for a long time uh, i've contacted them numerous times about orders about issues about if they could do um different things like combining orders always professional always very friendly always easy to work with and their recent costumes have been home runs. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, and I just thought I would let you know. So I am turning it back to me. So take it away, me. So, right. as I said, bookmark, bookmark that site below. Bookmark that store because uh, if you want affordable and good looking costume, I love this costume. Jeremy, I can't tell you how much I love this. <laughs> if you want good and affordable costumes, um, go there. Costume Mart. I, I can't recommend them highly enough. But that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it for it. me. That's, that's my that's three it. recommendations for people in a budget, very little experience who want something nice. Look at this. Look at this. Yes. Fan sets. <laughs> it does. It looks fantastic. Costume and again, I Jeremy. can speak to you. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> get so much attention. That that one will. If you're if you're looking at get, going to the convention scene, you already are. Um, Star Trek is a thing. I, from personal experience, the uniform Bill's wearing there does get a lot of attention. Um, I wore this one to uh, a convention, and it didn't get as much attention as I thought it would. Uh, to be honest with you, because um, it, it's. And I hate to pick on it. It's almost a little boring. It's almost a little plain. Oh. Uh, the only thing you're really getting out of it is like the chevron uh, pattern, if you'd call it that, on the sleeves. Yeah. And that's about it. Now, I do have props that I've added to it. I do have the Strange New Worlds yeah. phaser that I 
3D printed and I got real crazy with it. And even if I can add this, I even added an LED to it. Oh, nice, nice setting, nice. which is That's really, good. really nice. But <laughs> I love that it. That stood out more yeah. than the costume did. That that really, really did. Well, it's got a beautiful a working trigger. I, this right here is going to be remade. So I need to find something to do with this whole thing. And I don't have, not quite decided what I'm going to do with it though. But anyway, that's our re, uh, that's our recommendations for now, Bill. Yes. That's some great advice. I really appreciate all that uh, information. Links are going to be in the description below. Um, guys, we really appreciate you watching. And if you want to give some advice yourself, Please. let us know. If you want to be interviewed yourself, I would love to do that. Oh, I, I got a surprise that. interview coming up soon. Uh, just oh, random fan, not really random, but but a pretty interesting fan I came across. So maybe in the next month or two, uh, I'll get an interview with her. And I think it's going to be really interesting. So yeah, we That's want to interview fans. We are fans. We want yes. to talk to other fans. Yeah, so. we want to talk to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're the voice of you're, you're the voice of the channel, it's just as much as we are. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, we really appreciate you taking your time, and I hope we've been able to help. So we look forward to hearing your thoughts, comments, and hope to hear out of you. But for now, live long and prosper. Peace and, and long life. We'll see you later.